Hi, welcome to Andrew Buckle comic review of Marvel Family Comics number one. Obviously, this is a facsimile. If it was an original, apparently it would be about $160,000. Quite a bit of money looking on the uh, recent sales figures. You think, wow, I think I prefer it in this actually, to be honest. The mighty Marvel family joins forces versus Black Adam. That's the reason for this. And of course, this is from DC Comics. Just come out, so it should be still readily available. Part of their recent facsimiles, and you can see there, obviously, it's a Fawcett magazine. 1945, December, apparently. And I love these facsimiles. I really hope they bring out more of them, especially the Golden Age ones. Always fascinating. In full colour, Captain Marvel, Captain Marvel Jr., Mary Marvel, and also Uncle Marvel, of course, the Marvel that doesn't have any powers. Though I must admit, I love the way that he changes his clothes and he just shoves them aside and actually show that bit. You think, hmm, still, it's still pretty good. And yet at the same time, he goes and faces Black Adam in this. Bit of a spoiler, sorry. Black Adam's in this. This is the first appearance of Black Adam. And, well, considering Black Adam probably can wipe out entire skyscrapers, he doesn't do too bad for a guy that sort of goes up against Black Adam. But still, I think if I went up against Black Adam, there wouldn't be much left for me. Hey kids, look! And I love these sort of adverts you've got here. Uh, wonderful Tippy Toy number two, Benny Beaver and Fuzzy Bear and a load of different things. And you've also got some Captain Marvel ones. I imagine these go for serious money as well. Captain Marvel picture puzzle, as well as Captain Marvel overseas type cap, apparently. All hero tattoos pack and so on. And you've also got some other stories in this. So it's just Marvel Family, obviously the Marvel Family there, as well as apparently Shamrocks for Perry, a gripping short story, as well as Boxcar Benny and Richard Richard, no less. Apparently it's 36 pages. They actually got quite short by 1945. I mean, that was not, I mean, compared with some of the earlier ones, sometimes they were about like 68, whatever pages, loads of pages. These ones obviously were starting to shrink by that stage. So you've got Marvel Family, the Mighty Marvels Join Forces. Mighty Marvels Join Forces. Join Force. I don't know. Anyway, there's some really odd sort of ways of uh, saying it. But apparently their most frightful menace of the ages, Black Adam. I love the origin as well. Record of the Mighty Marvel Family, living on Earth, fighting evil. And they have to always put this sort of thing, giving a bit of information about the Mighty. And this was, I suppose, issue one. So anyone coming along? probably buying it at the news agents or newsstand. They would, you know, maybe they didn't know anything about Shazam or mighty uh, Captain Marvel. Still, so you've got a little bit of information and it gets straight into it for his crimes. I banished Black Adam to the farthest star. Now, if he was banished to the farthest star, he would probably take a while to get back, even going at pretty fast speed. But still, that's a minor issue. No one worries about that sort of thing. We'll both be crushed. Shazam! And I love the good old... Not that anyone noticed. Suddenly, hey, where's Captain Marvel suddenly appeared? But still, thanks, Captain Marvel. You saved my life. I lower the telescope gently. <laughs> Just great stuff. And then, of course, this they quite often show the origin. I think they showed the origin all the time. I don't know if it was in every single Shazam. Let's put the origin. Yeah, again, a good page of the origin. I name you Captain Marvel. Again, I guess this was the first issue, so maybe the second issue didn't keep featuring the origin. And also it gives the origins, of course, of the other characters as well, like Freddie Freeman. This is always quite interesting to find out how he ends up becoming, obviously, junior, Captain Marvel Jr. The thing is, of course, he has to say, like, it's Captain Marvel, and of course he doesn't say the same thing as Shazam. And that's a big clue for later on. But you've got Black Adam, he's come back to... now. I haven't seen the film. I don't know if the film's any good. At the moment, my Limitless card, I go to cinema quite a lot, my Limitless card is in frozen state. So as soon as that's all resolved, maybe I will pop down and see the latest film. But at the moment, I haven't seen it. Maybe I'll just uh, get it on rental. It seems to have had mixed reviews. Some people seem to like it. Some people say it's the most amazing film. And he's very different from, obviously, The Rock. Very different. But you've got to hear this guy sort of saying, get off the street, you're blocking traffic. And of course, Black Adam is not going to take that for... Now, Black Adam's had a weird sort of checkered career. He's obviously villainous here. And there's a bit of... I don't want to again spoil the story too much. 
it was 1945, so I guess I'm not spoiling it that much. But it's just the fact that, of course, he goes along there and bow, bangs it. And, of course, he stands there. He's perfectly OK. You can't hurt Black Adam. And, of course, he has a lovely battle between all of them. They all come in and give a bit of a punch up there. And he sort of wham. And you can see him sort of physically moved a little bit. I'm your equal. You can't whip me. Slightly odd, because apparently it looks like that Captain Marvel or Shazam, whatever, gave some of his power to Captain Marvel Jr., so if Black Adam, you'd think, would be slightly more powerful, or was there an equal sort of exchange? Is there some sort of power source? I don't know. Anyway, there's a sort of, you can't whip me. At the same time, I can't whip them. <laughs> it's great stuff. And it's got, uh, oh, after him, he's trying to give us the slip, and he does it quite quickly. As if a guy with, uh, obviously, wearing black and with a Shazam, it, you'd think people might spot him bit that way. But no one does. Everyone's looking around going, oh, I don't know. We'll go down into the old subway, Captain Marvel. <laughs> Bigger, big clue. Very convenient, the, the subway's just where, and Black Adam, of course, can go there. And But you get the origin of Black Adam as well, which is a completely daft origin. I mean, the guy, sorry, he just goes and gives, here, I will, he's a powerful champion. Really? Yeah, well, okay. So you're a powerful champion. Pronounce my name, and of course, does etc. Et Boom. The magic lightning has changed me. And then he goes off and just, I'm going to take over everything now. You'd think maybe the guy at Shazam would have used a bit of judgment there to decide, you know, I think maybe we might have made a bad choice there. That's not good. Get off that throne. Great stuff. The, the good, this was for kids. And it's still for kids now. It's still brilliant stuff. I love it. I'm now the ruler of Egypt. Throw the lot in. Why not? And it's a pity in many ways they didn't do more of a story with this bit, but of course he goes flying off to the furthest star. Why don't you just send him back to the, like, the origins of the universe or something? Right at the start of time, that would have taken a bit of time to come back. But he does, of course. However, this is it, and I love Uncle Marvel. Uncle Marvel's great. What a great character. And I don't know why they never ruled out an Uncle Marvel comic. That would have been good. But still, Shazam, of course, Black Captain Marvel... Always, Billy, shout, 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 just some of the stuff is just so good. Look at that, I mean, really, you want to reveal that he's Captain Marvel. Shout out your magic word. <laughs> I love it. Ooh, and he always gets just about to word Shaz, not sh or S-H, S. He's always just caught just at that point. I think that's a bit of a, the criminal fraternity would have communicated to everyone. Just stop him speaking, saying the word. And then, of course, that would have resolved it all. And, of course, she gets stronger and all that sort of stuff. It's just great. And I love the bit that he's kicking away the, the clothes. I just think that is just brilliant storyline. I suppose a bit like Superman. <laughs> he goes into his... Where does he put his clothes? Obviously, he leaves them in a sort of uh, phone box. Of course, with uh, Uncle Marvel, he just leaves them on the floor. That's a bit easier bit of a mess, I would have thought, and people might notice them, but still. And I love that. And of course, but then again, like I see, he does get bopped by him. And if he was getting bopped by him, I would have thought that if he didn't have some power, that would have been painful. But still, it's a great little story. No, I say, I'm not going to spoil it out. It's, it's a daft ending. And of course, you know that Black Adam came, he's back and he's battling in all different comics. And it's great stories. I love all these ones. But this one's a weird one. And I'm not certain why they included this. And again, I'm not going to show that at the end of it. And you've got here, Boxcar Benny. Very unusual storyline there. And you've got Richard Richard. Just a... Well, actually, weirdly, you've got Boxcar Benny there. And it's just a two pack, two rows. And then you've got underneath, you, they start a story. But it's just two pack, or just one panel. And then you've got four or five pages afterwards. It's sort of very unusual. Very nice perfectly reasonably drawn, but it uh, doesn't really fit. And I'm not certain why they would have done that. Marvel, why didn't they go with a Marvel family story? Another Marvel family story. Why did they include this? Makes no sense. You've got Hamlet there and all that sort of thing. Just seems a bit of an odd sort of thing to include. Obviously, that was included in 1945, but it just seems odd. And it's but still not bad. And of course, they have to always include the good old uh, little story there for postal reasons but it's just fascinating and also that's graham o'donnell it's not even a marvel family story again you would have thought why didn't they include a marvel family story or captain marvel story or a billy bateson story batson bateson however but it's just odd i always love also another thing is you can see the font 
And I just noticed, just looking at this font, the font sort of changes on that one. Now, I don't know if it's just the way it's been scanned and it's just ended up being slightly different, but it's just different on that side than the other side. Very strange. Still, you've got another Marvel family story and Baby Marvel. I don't know if they ever introduced a Baby Marvel, a proper Marvel baby or Baby Marvel. Though I must admit, how did Baby Marvel call out Shazam? Maybe it cried and that was enough to get, so that would be a bit tricky one because, anyway, I'm not even going to think about that. It's just too complicated. What's it sound like a baby crying? And I love that. Holy moly. And they always love the way they said that. And of course, got, uh, very convenient, of course, it's uh, Billy there. And it's just a great little story again. He's, with all his powers, and this is the, the lovely bit about some of these stories, is he's got all these powers, but he can't, of course, and <laughs> requires Mary Marvel to come along and help. And it's just, uh, this is trouble, a baby. And even Uncle Marvel gets in there and helps. He's got, they are just there testing for the temperature and all those sort of things. No, real, real, quite nice little touches there. Guess is the best way, but I hope none of the others see me doing this. Ah, just the right temperature. And you've got, you've got to hear about diapers and all that sort of thing. I guess Billy one might miss the old red underwear. Was, super, was I was going to say Superman, was Shazam's, Clothes indestructible as well. I guess they must have been while they were on him. I mean, but he's cussing them up. That's too, again, too confusing. Off fly, oops. And of course, he's held back by Mary Marvel. Just think, it's just... And he's, of course, got the insignia of uh, the Marvel family. Just really, really good little story. This is just really nice. I mean, it's the sort of story that would never... Hard to imagine now. Weirdly, there are stories I've just noticed on recently. There's a new, uh, the Disney Plus, the Gardens of the Galaxy Christmas one or whatever, holiday special. And that looks amazing. I am really looking forward to that. That looks really great. And that sort of sort of has that sort of nothing story. But that's the stories I quite often like. They're the special stories like Fantastic Four, Meet the Public story. Was it Fantastic Four? number 11 or something where they go out and these sort of stories where they're just not really think anything actually happens particularly and they're just lovely little stories and I wish they would do more of these sort of stories maybe they do maybe I just don't notice them as many times now but it's just great now I don't know the art unfortunately another problem with Marvel Family or any of these sort of old Marvel comic uh, Marvel comics Fawcett comics they never put the names of the artists obviously C.C. Beck but it's just Possibly. But sometimes I don't know. I mean, I'm not very good when it comes to artists. I mean, I'm certain someone will turn around. No, that is not X, Y, Z. But I didn't check beforehand the artists. <laughs> it's probably not. But it's it's always a pity they didn't include it. Also, the writer, the colourist, the letterer, all the people that were involved in it. Just really, really always slightly bugs me that the fact they never included those. And it's just so... Anyway, I guess I know that I can understand the reasons, but it just seems to always still still bugs me that that lots of these people, creative people, deserve credit. And that's uh, but it's I love the ending bit. And I, again, I don't want to spoil it with the baby. I mean, just it's just a great story with the baby. That baby looks a bit different. We see <laughs> the baby's not consistent. There's a bit of inconsistency, and uh, it's it's still good. But the thing is, oh, there is a bit of uh, some storyline, but not very much, where he's sort of, there's obviously a gang there involved. But it's, they quite often had those gangs, and they quite often sorted them out after about one or two panels. Against, I mean, even Uncle Marvel can, you know, beat everyone. We're surrounded, Uncle Marvel too. That's just great. Marvel's Marvel's here, Marvel's there, Marvel's Marvel's everywhere. That sounds like a great little song. Singing the, their famous song, The Mighty... I wonder if they released a record. There probably was a record. Who knows? But it's like that baby. They obviously choke as the baby, of course, is suddenly gone. Not very observant. For a superhero with all these amazing powers, you'd think he might spot. Oh, where's, where's the baby gone? But anyway, and I love the ending. The ending, because I get... No, I'm not going to spoil it. Just see it. The ending is just absolutely brilliant. Just so daft. Absolutely. And also, I will show you how to learn radio. And I love the bits there. Again, I don't want to show the ends. So I'll just... How to learn radio by practising in spare time. No radio. Win success. I will train you at home. And all these sort of things. And I love this sort of stuff. And this is even really brilliant at the end. Love it. Stop right where you are. Here's a magazine that's filled with marvels. 
a mechanic illustrated. It's crammed with exciting new inventions. I counted 24 airplane stories in two issues. Hmm. These photo kinks are what I like. Mechanics Illustrated. They're fun. Obviously, they've got about cameras in there. Also, about rockets and all those sort of things. So, you've got some lovely extra bits of Marvel on the back. I'm just great. Editor. Now, I don't know if this was related to Force. I assume it must have been. I don't know, but it's got an address there. I'm enclosing one dollar for seven issues of this magazine subscription. Oh, yeah, it says Fawcett Publications down the bottom there. So I guess it was. But it's just, I love these ones. These are just great. I like really, really hope that DC Comics bring out a lot more of these, even if it does have some very odd stories. I just love this sort of thing as well. This is something else. And I just just looking at it. I love the way they do this. It's really good. And I always love it also this advisory bit as well, because they always put these sort of things, obviously people that to give sort of maintain the highest standards of wholesome entertainment, that sort of stuff. And it's got here WH Fawcett, President Junior. And it's director of clinic for gifted children, uh, professor of education, etc. So they had a famous aviator. Wow. Major Al Williams. It's just a, those sort of things. They always included that. I love those bits. And you've got consulting editor, Child Study Association of America, just great. But they didn't include any information about the artist and writers. Just include all this sort of information. But it's, it's still great. And I always wonder who did the short, the short story, the two page or one page story that they included in this. They never get many. And sometimes they're probably famous people who write, write these stories, you know. And does anyone know about them? Who wrote them? I mean, maybe there's information. But when you look online, sometimes you can't find much. It doesn't say, it just says unknown. And it's, I guess it's very hard to work out. But I love that way they've done with the stars. I just think that's a really, really, and I look at old uh, Uncle Marvel again, just very odd. Why didn't they put him in costume? That would seem to be, he's, he's on costume in the front. And you've also got the wizard. Why is the wizard slightly different? See, I've got, I'll just have a quick look. Now the wizard is slightly, I guess he's sort of, no, he's in blue there. So he's got blue. You see him in blue there. And I suppose, of course, he's in a ghostly state at this point. But it's still all great stuff. In full colour. Absolutely brilliant. Totally recommended. They've brought out a few of these recently that I've uh, got the Superman one. I'm not going to do a review of that one. The Superman one. It's very hard to do a review of Superman comic. It's sort of full on Superman. There's not really much to really describe. Whereas Marvel Family somehow, because of the extra characters, I love all the characters. They've all got their individual things. It just makes it great. But there's also Action Comics, number one. That's brilliant. And uh, also, uh, of course, the Detective Comics. I mean, just see, just hope they produce more. Maybe the Justice Society of America. That would be nice. My favourite one would be the Injustice Society of America. I love that one. Or maybe the Crime Gangs one. Not so fussed about issue three... Or maybe the Wonder Woman first appearance. Not so fussed about those really early ones. Some of those are not that great. Then they're okay. But they have some really weird storylines. I really liked it when it got to about 37, 38, that sort of period. So there's there's loads of them. Green Lantern, of course, would be nice. Nice Alex Toth one. That would be superb. And also, of course, Flash, maybe some of the later ones. That's the thing I like about this. 1945. It's not just the early, early ones. I like that period, 48, 49. They sort of changed. They were very slightly odd, unusual artwork style. And it went very different from, the, obviously, the war years. So it's always fascinating to see them when they do bring those sort of ones out. They don't bring many of them out. So when they do bring them out, you think, oh, it's just great to see. So Marvel Family Comics, number one, really great. Fawcett Magazine, obviously, DC Comics. Totally brilliant. Recommended.